Hello, hello, everybody. It is 1.08 p.m. Central Time on the 21st of October 2020. It's Wednesday here in the United States, and I hope you are doing well. We're here to talk about seismic events again. We're using Earthquake 3D, the program, in case you don't know what you're looking at. You can get a free version or a paid version. I don't get anything for recommending it, but I do recommend that you use it at least a program to keep track of where the earthquakes are. Also, the more feeds you have, the better. So we're using the USGS. Also using the EMSC, coming out of Europe to give us a good idea of what has struck. And before we even get going, let me just get a display capture turned on here. Okay, I think that worked. Again, I've got a new little setup here, so we're trying to get that all set up. Uh, guys, so we're going to start over here in the West Pacific. For those who are new, the earthquakes that are raised high off the globe are deep down into the Earth. And the deeper they are, of course, we watch for shallower movement next to the deep earthquakes. So like a push coming up on the underside of the plate, we see these deep earthquakes occur. And then next to them, big outbreaks spread out and away from where the pushes happen. So, for instance, starting right here where our letter D is. Letter D stands for deep earthquakes. It's a forecast point where we watch for deep earthquakes to occur. And we have two deep fours, 4.5s, striking down below the plate there. Then fives spread out, down, and away, down to our letter X, down here at the South Pacific. Now, we can trace this fracture zone back up to the west by northwest. And it goes into this under seamount chain of volcanoes that goes right back up to where the deep earthquakes came hammering in down below. Also, energy traveled further all the way over to the east. Following the fracture zone, you see how it makes a bend past the X and goes right into Antarctica. Well, the same point, we have activity that comes down out of South America and goes down and around and over to our letter X's. And that happened over the past few days. Now, let me get those earthquakes. I don't even know if they're going to all be on there, but... This new one is coming down from the north and over from the west. They're all about the same size in the 5.0 range. Going back up to where we had a 6 last night, right here. Take a look at it real close. You see it? Well, actually, it doesn't say 6, does it? It says 5.9. 5.9. We've got another .9 on this, and .9 is going to be a common factor for the rest of the update. Ah, get a sip of my coffee while you think about that. So the point 0.9 business, we'll talk about that later on. But let's go over to the west, and we have another set of deep earthquakes. One deep earthquake on our letter D here. The other deep earthquake right next to our letter D here. We have two letter Ds, two deep earthquakes. One marked in white, one marked in pink. The white earthquake is from today. Pink earthquake is from yesterday. So a deep 5 and a deep 4. Yesterday, 5s spread out to the west and ended up right here at the tip of Sumatra, Indonesia. That was in the discussion we had yesterday. Equal distant spaced earthquakes across Indonesia going right out to the tip, which led me to issue a warning for right here, Myanmar, China border region. And let me open it up on the plate boundary map to show you the spot that I warned coming out of Myanmar. Here's Myanmar, here's the bend in the plate, and the spot warned was right at the bend in the plate, and we had warned Myanmar. Well, Myanmar did get like a four, you don't even see it on the feed here, but the four did strike right in Myanmar. This is to the east of the bend, it's more than 200 miles, but man, I'll tell you what, that's the earthquake we're looking for. Right at the bend, but it's on the inside edge of the Kraton into China, which really is the Himalayan range. You see the brownish color here? The Himalayas go right through here, but really the mountain ranges extend all the way across China. Let me show it to you on actual aerial imagery here. So the new earthquake happening back over here, and it's in the Sichuan province, I believe, or just a little bit north of it. But you see which way the mountains bend. They go over to the west make a bend to the west and then down across through Nepal. Let me turn off all the borders. Maybe even that might even help to turn off the borders and labels. And you can just see the shape of the plate coming out of Myanmar and making a bend to the west. So on the eastern side of the bend, we've got 5.0 activity in China. 
Over to the west, further, 4.6. It's a stepping stone path, then going right over to the border with Afghanistan. Complete silence coming out of Iran, South Pakistan, and Western Afghanistan. We have two sets of arrows. One arrow to the south lies on the plate boundary that the USGS has marked in this red line. But to the north, there's no red line on the USGS map. Instead, we have an arrow there. Because if you go look at the topography, look at this. Like a flowing river going around the outside edge of the plate interior. To the south, the USGS has the plate boundary mark. But notice to the north. It breaks around central Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Like this is a giant stone in a flowing river. But these are mountain ranges that are bent this way, following the plate boundary. And guess what follows these bends in the plates? Earthquakes. So we would expect the middle point here in the middle of Iran on both sides, both arrows, to move fairly significantly in the next few days. The combined total of what's to the east and to the west, think of this like a two-arm scale. And this is the fulcrum point in between them that needs to break. Additionally, a few days back, there was a push that came from the south, prompting me to issue a warning for Cyprus. Let me show you where Cyprus is. It's this tiny island here right underneath the red line. The red line is just part of our arrow setup going into Europe. So a small earthquake struck directly at Cyprus which is not that rare. It happens maybe once every couple weeks. But we're looking for about three magnitudes higher on this, a thousand-fold more power to come into this location in the next few days. And I would now watch the eastern side of Cyprus in between our two sets of rings where they overlap. That technically goes over to Syria, but I would warn still Cyprus. Now, over to the west, look at this. A spread of fours and threes went across all of Europe. We can turn down the rings to get a better view on the spots that were hit, but let's just name some countries. Romania, 3.1. Poland, the day before, 3 point something also striking. So that makes Romania and Poland check them both off the list. Now that's within the magnitude. I'd warned for up to 4.0 and 3 point something came rolling in at both spots. Poland. Southwest Poland, right at the red arrow, and now today on the back side. Now let me show it to you on the actual aerial photography here. Like a backwards S shape here in Eastern Europe, lined with trees, the eastern edge of the Craton, as are all mountains, of course, goes up across Europe and makes three bends going through Germany and France. And turning the borders and labels back on, you can see it goes to the Czech Republic, Germany, and France. Well, the edge of the Craton gets displaced. And that's why we got earthquake activity in Poland and Romania. Also, we saw a new activity. Brits, British people, good day to you, sir. I said good day. Hmm, Dean Grumpets, let's go get our coordinates on this. Ah, uh, yes, I'm a damn yank. I spent a good month over in the UK. Had a good time. You know what they asked me when I was over there? Do I have a cowboy hat? Which, as you guys know, I do. <laughs> do I own a gun? Well, I, that's private business, I told them. Most Americans don't like talking about. And do I own a horse? And I said, you know what, guys? We got to stop there. You guys have been watching too much Bonanza on BBC Two. Which coincidentally, was on when I was over there, and they were playing, like, John Wayne. Well, okay, anyway, fun story about being over in the UK. So let's zoom in on our location. It's a rare spot, but I have to remind everybody, going back to the start of this past week, the coast of Normandy, France, was struck, as expected in the English Channel. Now a push is going out across, and we already know energy has traveled out to Iceland, which was struck by 5.0 activity, 5.5, yesterday. Now, we need to look in this location in the UK for something else. So we have to get our nearby towns first. Lincoln, Market, Rosin, Brig, Worksop, <laughs> Worksop, 
<laughs> I'm sure I'm butchering the way that's pronounced, Brits. Don't mind me. I'm just an American. But here at the center, we need to go over to a site called Frack Off UK. Now, Frack Off, I, I think we can figure out where they stand on fracking. But let's see. Again, I'm not biased either way, but this site is extremely helpful in finding drill points and pumping operations in the UK. So let's click on their map and go down here and find the towns in question. Again, nearby towns, Market Rosin, Grimsby. You see where we are in the UK, so it should be pretty easy to find if there's anything here around Lincoln. And going back to their website, let's zoom in. Let's see, we have to control. There we are. There's Hull. Okay, Grimsby. Let's just make sure we've got the right area. There's Grimsby. We go to the southwest of Grimsby. So southwest of Grimsby, right down in here. What is this? PEDL181. Operator Europa Oil and Gas PLC planning authorities, but we don't have anything more on it. Let's see what the PEDL181 is. My connection is not private. What the heck? Not secure. Let's go anyways. Unsafe. Yeah, I bet. Site moved. Ah, the UK energy portals moved. Well, wow. oh, not, whoa, 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 got to log in, man, dang, all I want to find out is what the, what the, okay, okay, let's just drop that and just say, look, it's within a little area where they're authorized for oil and gas exploration, I don't know if they have any current going on there now, good luck finding out. But they're putting some major hurdles for the public to find out that info, which kind of makes me think there's something going on there. So a drill point there would make all the difference in the world, wouldn't it? Either way, it's on a transfer point going up to the north. And that's all I need to see to know that something strange is going on. Now let's go back across the Pacific. So let's recap. First of all, a series of deep earthquakes, a 6 or 5.9 right next to it. Fives spreading out down across our fracture zones, going down to the other side of the Southeast Pacific. And to back it out, let me show you the equidistant spacing on this. Let's get all the smaller earthquakes out of here and just look at the fives. Check it out. Do you see this? So there's only a few spots missing. And again, if we take the 4.9s into account, we can actually see a little bit more. But let's just look at the fives and greater because, again, equidistantly spaced across a whole portion of the South Pacific, all in a day's time. Nobody can deny it. This isn't me doing anything with the placement of the rings either. We can even turn the rings off and you can still see in the last day a good portion of the South Pacific overall from east to west moved on a mid-range 5 level. So what could cause that? Well, we have to go back to the deep earthquakes that are hammering in on the underside of the plate. By the way, a new deep earthquake has just been reported in here in the past few minutes. Hold on. A new deep 4.1 struck at 1802 UTC 20 minutes ago. So it just got reported here by the agencies who reported this. I think the Europeans. The Europeans have this. 407 kilometers deep. So there's a hammering action coming in on the underside of the plate. Let me show it to you what I think is going on. Down below the plates in the magma, I think that there's a concentric wave forming from the underside curvature of wherever the deep earthquakes are occurring underneath the plate, there must be some curvature there, which is trapping waves, focusing them in. If they're coming in from one way or the other, they form a concentric wave when they come in together. And at that hammer point, where it hammers in from the underside of the plate, that's where our deep earthquakes occur. And then spreading out and away from the deep earthquakes as more and more are hammering off. It's not just one. But as they hammer off, when the waves combine, I believe they form into standing waves, standing waves that spread and the standing like in a tank. But in this case, instead of being in a tank, we are on the red lines going around the entire Pacific plate. So we get 
equidistantly spaced fives, like in the wave tank, where each one of these would be an earthquake of the same size, spreading out across a distance. And as it spreads, the next spot to fill in is the middle point of the previous wave. So, in other words, the pinnacle goes to the valley of the middle point of each previous wave as it moves. And I think that's what's dropping off the earthquakes along the way. Okay? So that's just amazing, isn't it? Again, to see it go from Fiji all the way back down across the South Pacific, all the way over. And then, of course, South America worked in as well. Everywhere from here over to here and down and around and over has moved. Well, I mean, why does that matter? Because this just moved on the north side of the Pacific with our 7.5 and our warm outbreak and our tsunami that took place. Now, over on the west side, the spread went out over into China. And again, we have equal distant, equidistant spaced quakes spread out, and this time it's fours with fives sandwiched in between them. And there's only a few open spots, hence my warning, for instance, in Iran. Okay, now let's go up towards Japan because the same thing happened. We have fives that spread up to Japan, and then on both sides of the fives, fours. 4.8 on one side, 4.7 on the other. I would call these two of the same sized earthquakes on either side, and guess which one struck first? The one in the middle. The one in the middle struck first, then on either side we have same-sized earthquakes going out in each direction, going down to the south and up to the north. Here, across this portion of the plate boundary, going up towards Japan and down towards Guam. And why does that matter? Well, look at our arrows. See how they have double side on them? We only have a few spots on the planet. This is pretty much the only one that has double-sided arrows. The other one goes right across here, across the Pacific from Japan over to San Francisco. But this spot moves back and forth. So if we get a push up here, we can see it spread down across both ways. Both ways of what? Both ways of this. To the east and west side. And we get the same size movement usually within a hair of a point of one another on both sides of the region. So this side and this side, they tend to show the same sized earthquakes within a few days of each other. So that would mean I would expect new 5.0 range activity to be popping off here very soon at the middle point next to Taiwan going down into Philippines or as far north as up into Okinawa with the center point being Taiwan which look at it this way that this is the center point we would watch just a little bit to the north and just a little bit to the south because this side's moving to the east we watch the western side over to the west in the middle just like all the other spots that middle point is where we watch it's like a fulcrum point on a scale is the best description I can give you this is another example right here. This open area. We have a large cluster of earthquakes going all the way across Indonesia for 3,000 miles. And then we have deep earthquakes hammering off on the underside of the plate over here at our letter D. So there's an open point here. This is eastern Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands. And there's an open point here at New Caledonia. Now let me show it to you on the USGS plate foundry. And you'll see it here. We have an open point on the red lines here, and we have an open point on the red lines down here. And those middle open points at the center, the fulcrum, between our movement on one side and the other, that's where we watch for bigger releases to happen. So I would warn right now New Caledonia, for instance, and we would warn Papua New Guinea for something bigger than what's on both sides currently. Now let's get into the United States and warnings that we issued and Warnings that have expired because we had some warnings for the West Coast of the United States. But before we get into the warnings that expired, which all expired today, basically, or midnight last night, people are telling me I should give it another day. Well, I will, but I'm not going to keep the warning going. I'll watch for myself, but I would consider this a strikeout on the West Coast. We'll get into that in a second. Look at the earthquakes across the Craton. This is basically 24 hours to 48 hours worth of earthquakes going down through Texas back up to Oklahoma, all the way over to the East Coast. Now, we're looking at 2.0 and greater, but here's 0.0 and greater. It doesn't really add too many more to the list, but it just fills in a few areas. The Craton Edge has been displaced on a three-point-something basis in the last few days. Again, look at it. Here's our 2.9s and greater. Well, here. There's 2.9 and greater. All the way across the West Coast. We'll start up in the West, Northwest, right above the magma chamber for Yellowstone, believe it or not, below Idaho. 
and a 2.9 out in front of Yellowstone National Park. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the microphone there. Out in front of Yellowstone National Park, over to the east on our arrow, a three, basically. So it's two threes to the north. One above the deepest part of the magma chamber, that's in Idaho, that goes to Yellowstone. But the feeder for the magma chamber is below Oregon. Goes across Idaho and at a diagonal angle up to the park in Yellowstone at the surface. Out in front of the park, back behind the park, threes. Going down the edge of the craton, down to Texas, threes. The cumulative total of everything that we see on the West Coast headed over to the Midwest and struck at the pumping operations in Oklahoma, on the edge of the craton in Oklahoma. And these are all drill points, at least here and here. Certainly, and we can go look them up if we need to. But first, the 3.4s on the West Coast. We have to talk about this. Again, we're looking at everything 2.9 and greater. So you see, we topped out at 3.4 on the West Coast so far. 3.4 up north next to Eureka. 3.4 down south next to San Diego. And a 3.3 to 3.4, striking at Monte Cristo Hills, Volcanic Buttes. Now, do any of those locations sound familiar to anyone? How about the war? We issued four warnings, plus a fifth if the other four struck. In California, I had technically five warnings going in California. The spots were Eureka, California, Monte Cristo Hills, and San Diego, as well as Owens Valley in between, and the Bay Area. So two areas did not move at all. That's Owens Valley and the Bay Area. Owens Valley, again, is right where all the rings overlap here between our sets of threes. Now you'll notice there's a 3.1 out in the Mojave. That is right next to Pisgah Crater, of all the places. And if you don't know my story on Pisgah Crater, I'm not going to tell it again. You ought to go source that out. So the spots that did not move are right where all the rings overlap. But wait, I issued warnings for upper fours to low fives. And three of the locations got hit spot on. Again, Eureka warned, and it got hit with a 3.4. It was warned for a 4.9 to 5 point something. It's a magnitude and a half under the expected warned. In other words, it's an earthquake forecast miss when it comes to the magnitude. It's a spot on hit when it comes to the location. Again, Eureka is right north of here. Eureka's right here at the Bulge, right north of the Bulge in Western California along the coast. The second warned area, where the same sized earthquake came in, by the way, again, 3.4 to 3.3, Monte Cristo Hills, and the earthquake struck directly at Monte Cristo Hills. So that's two spot on locations where we saw a definite increase. We didn't have anything this big last week there. Then the third warned location, down here to the south, LA to San Diego. All three were warned for 4.9 to 5.0, and all three got 3.4s. So what about the middle point? Middle point did not move as expected at all. So that would be an earthquake forecast full miss, at least on the magnitudes and location along the middle point at the Owens Valley, which is right here in Eastern California along the Nevada border. And I told everybody, when I issue these warnings, if I don't get it right, I try to come back on and figure out why publicly. I'm not going to hide away from it if I get a location wrong i want to know why because i've been correct on the large earthquakes in california we issued the warning for the biggest earthquake in 20 years in california the day before it hit and that's happened several times around the world that's not just a chance it's happened over in italy and all these other locations so if it doesn't hit as expected i want to know why and when i look at the earthquakes over the past day and a half and i see that mid-range threes struck across the whole dang plate that means less energy came in than expected, but all the spots are moving currently now, except for the San Andreas Fault, which clearly is tied into something else. Let me explain. So up here on the West Coast, we have the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. Do you see these jagged edges off the plate? This is off the Pacific plate, the jagged edges. And then the North American plate, of course, has a more smoother plate boundary, like up in Alaska or goes over to Kamchatka, or back down to Japan. Much smoother. These jagged edges are areas where energy catches in from the Pacific, which is in motion, the ring of fire in motion. Hence the earthquakes coming in from the north, along the red line up to the north, 7.5 and tsunami. And this whole thing moving from here all the way over to here, on the buoys. But down to the east-southeast, 
This is all shifting right now in what professionals call a slow slip, an episodic tremor slip, an ETS. Here are the tremors as of yesterday, 135 of them. Something about this, these have spread out down from Washington, and now this has made four distinct points from Washington into central Oregon. All these little red dots are vibrations as the plate shifts. Let's go back a day to the 19th, where there's 219, there's more of them. And they're predominantly centered in Washington, and a cluster of them down in Oregon, southwest Oregon, two organized areas. So that was two days ago. Yesterday it split into four areas. In other words, the area that's moving or shifting or vibrating grew since the day before. It was clustered here, and it grew into this while becoming less in the number of shifts or in the number of vibrations. It's grown in area or size. Let's go back of several days. Let's go back like to the 10th or 11th. Here we are, 614, centered in Washington. Now we're going to bring it forward day by day. Let me make sure you guys can see all this. We're going to bring it forward day by day. These are vibrations as the plate is shifting. And the Juan de Fuca out here, which I just showed you on this chart, is putting tension in from these jagged points, pointing in to land. Just remember that. Look where the points are. Up by Vancouver, right here in the center, going off the center coast or central point of Oregon, and then a point down here to the south going down towards California, and a flow that goes out, or a fault that flows down to the south. Now, just remember that because look at the tremors. Watch this. The 12th, boom, we go up to the north where the arrows are pointing to the north up at Vancouver Island. Then go to the 13th. Boom, we shift down to the south, down to the southern arrow, down by California. So it went from one side to the other like a teetering scale or two children on a seesaw. And the center point is Washington. Go back to the 14th. Go forward to the 14th. And it's centered back in Washington. Go to the 15th. Well, look. It's centered back up in Washington and moving or tilting up into Oregon or up into Vancouver Island. Go forward to the 16th. Stays there. Go forward to the 17th. It shows back up down in Oregon. This time, both sides. Go forward to the 18th. Goes back up into Vancouver. 19th, back down to Oregon. 20th, spread out across the whole area. And we don't have the tremors yet for today. So do you see what's happening? Let's go back to the USGS map. On land, here, we're bouncing back and forth between here and here. With this being the center point. But look what's to the north, the jagged edges pointing in. And down to the south, jagged edges pointing in, going into California in the San Andreas Fault that makes a diagonal line down across California. Hence my warnings for California because the plate is shifting. And we know the plate is shifting. Compare the earthquakes to the edge of the craton. All the way over to the east coast. There is no doubt about it. Now the hot spots, the hot spots took place up here right next to Haida Gwaii yesterday. And we want to at least say at least there were at least a few hundred of them flaring off out here at a volcanic group east of Haida Gwaii. A cluster of them witnessed by thousands of people so nobody can say it's just Dutch since seen hotspots. And you can't say it's farmers burning their fields when it's just forested areas that are covered in snow and rain from huge downpours and snowstorms that have been coming in up there, which then the hotspots could only be explained by one thing. It's a volcanic group. It's next to Haida Gwaii. We just had a huge shift on the plate boundary up to the north that sent buoys into event mode all the way down to off the coast of Haida Gwaii. So a buoy in event mode here, hotspots flaring off at the volcanic group to the east of Haida Gwaii. And let me show it to you. Go all the way over to the United States. Bring it back due north. Here is Haida Gwaii. And here over to the east, we'll turn our place marks back on so you can see the volcanic place marks from the Smithsonian. So there's no debate on that either. People used to debate me before I got the place mark. I used to show the volcanoes and say, oh, here's the volcano such and such. And they'd be like, oh, well, you could just be saying that's a volcano. <laughs> okay, TCX River Cone. Sayax, Sayax River Cone. But 
There it is. I mean, that's just part of one little cone in a huge volcanic group called Alice Arm, Ben Canal, Ruyard Bay, Crow Lagoon, and so forth all the way around the area. And all the hot spots coming in right around in here. And the buoy in event mode somewhere out here. Buoy in event mode because the plate boundary shifted, which we already talked about in my past several videos. This red line shifted, big time shifted, all the way across and down to here. So then all of this starts shifting. And that's what's going on on land. But that's already been taking place for the last 11 days, 12 days, maybe even two weeks. So the slow slip has been happening up here. That is preventing or interfering with the flow going down into California. The flow is going across the Craton. We can see it. It goes down to Texas. It goes back up into Oklahoma. And I said I would show you the pumping operations, right? Ah, okay, here we go. Let's look up the earthquakes for the last 24 hours in the United States. We'll start with the 0.0, .0 and greater one day feed. This will get some of the earthquakes out of here. So just the last day's worth of earthquakes is what we should see now. And that's still going to have the earthquakes in Oklahoma since they struck all in the last day. 3.4 magnitude from the Europeans. Hold on. What does the USGS have it at? Ha! 3.2. Wait! Look at the name. Oh, this is some facepalm stuff they got going on. All right. Ah, Malfoy. Ah, Potter. Hey, Potter. Damn Potter. Harry Potter. All right. All right. You like that? Hey, you know what Harry Potter said when he found the oil well? Expecto Petroleum. All right. But I'm bunt. Look where we are. Speaking of expecting petroleum, we are right in the middle of a frack well operation. Fracking. This is wastewater disposal where they'll pump water down into the ground with chemicals laden into it, leave the water down on the ground and get the oil and gas that breaks out of the shale when they inject that wastewater in. So all of these little pads here are different pumping operations and they just go on for miles. They're all over the place. You'll find the tanks, the pumps, the jacks, the pipelines. They all connect to greater pipelines that then take it to, I guess, condensing stations and collection stations. That's in Oklahoma right there. And all of these earthquakes, every single one of them, you go look them up, they're all going to take you to the same kind of place. Now, what's happening here, you see how the 3.4 is in the middle in between all our smaller earthquakes? Think of this like throwing a rock in a pond and the shaking that's going on around the out, outer edge as the wave spreads. Now, this is all in the last day where this is that center point. Remember, the center point between the center of the wave could be even a concentric wave, that circular wave. But all of these drill points around it, it's like a super fracture. So a break happens in the middle, and then we see a spread go out to the other wells nearby. And look at the spacing on these. Again, it's virtually equidistant. Right down to... It looks... Almost equal spaced. Now down in Texas, do I need to show you the Texas pumping operations? <laughs> Everybody knows about the Texas pumping operations, so I shouldn't need to show that. Again, Texas is like Saudi Arabia when it comes to all the drill points. But most people don't know that they've drilled the hell out of the edge of the Craton. Ah, uh, let me show it to you. Hold on. This is for new people now. New people. Toya, Texas. Oh man, we can make all kinds of Texas jokes here, but what we won't do that. We're just going to go deep into the heart of West Texas. There, that, that was a joke. Get it? Okay, here we are. Where are we? We're out in the middle of a field. We're in a farmer's field. I knew it. Ah, it's a conspiracy. Wait, hold on. What are these? Ah, okay. There's the tanks and the pumps and the jacks and the pipeline and the burn flare apparatus right in the middle in case there's any kind of emergency, but do you see the pond here? Don't worry, that's black liner in the pond. They will try to collect rainwater in these. So it, they don't put nasties out into the pond. They let the pond collect water, and then they take the water and pump it down into the ground to break apart the shale. This one doesn't even look like it's being used. This looks like an older pad. 
right here where they've removed a lot of it. They still left the wellhead and some old pipeline there. But this, look, we're on the edge of the Kraton, and there are just tens of thousands of drill points across here. All of these are different drill points. This is just one road, right? I'm just going down one road in operations that are just, like I said, Saudi Arabia size. They just go on and on for miles. And this is just one little county town line there. There's more densely packed wells than that. Look at this. All of these. Or what's right next to it, which is just spread out. It, all of these. Let's see if I can fi find a town so you can see what a town looks like in comparison. Can't even find any. Can't even find... Here, here, here's, here's a town. There's a town. There's the pumping opera. Hey, look, hold on. We have wells flaring off currently right now in Texas at the location. Hot spots detected. There's no fires there. There's no forest there. This is a huge oil and gas pumping operation. And every one of these pads has a flare off burn apparatus in case they have overpressure or they need to burn it off for some reason. So now again, we're right next to it with the earthquake. And we have overpressure or something going on where they're flaring it off. So let's just recap. A line of earthquakes going across the edge of the Kraton. There is no dispute in that. This is 24 hours worth of earthquakes and the edge of the Kraton. So the Kraton is being displaced, but it's a full magnitude and a half under what I was expecting. Which means there's still energy trapped up in the northwest. Which we know there is because the plate is still shifting. I just showed you all the little red dots from the... Pacific Northwest Seismic Network here, up to current. This is yesterday's tremors. We'll get today's readout in a few hours. So Washington and Oregon are shifting, as of yesterday, still with at least 100-something. It's been going on for like two weeks almost, and it's interfering with the flow down into California. Now look at the last 24 hours worth of earthquakes, and there is a change. This is a status update now for the people in California. Let me make sure that I have the 24-hour feed turned on. 0.0, .0 USGS, USA, one day. Apply. This matters. In 24 hours' time, the number of earthquakes in California has skyrocketed from where we previously were. We call this a frequency increase. Now, the power behind it has not gone up yet. But the number of events has certainly gone up. So the frequency or the number of earthquakes has gone up while the power behind it has been remained somewhat low while all this is shifting up here, guys. And the rest of the plate starts to go over to the East Coast with threes. So it's saturating the plate right now, I think, what's happening here. And the plate's becoming loaded with power going across it, seeking out the weak points along the way. California starts to shift, shimmy, shake, and vibrate with a lot more activity. And let's just get into it now. So the spots that are shimmying and shaking across California, again, the number of earthquakes has increased. Let me show it to you like this. So think of it like this. You see these waves, how they start out? Let's go to where they first start. How they start out real small in the tank. You see that? They're real low. Not that big. So I would liken that to what's going on in California right now. The waves aren't that big. But as we pump more power into it, look, the waves start to get more amplitude to them more power behind them as the waves combine and their force focuses in. Instead of causing a chaotic jostling of waves around the tank, they become organized in a standing wave. So I think that's what's happening here in California, that you are in that stage where the waves are inundating in, but they're low, at least power-wise, but the number of waves coming in is increasing as this is shifting and releasing its energy into the edge of the Kraton. So where should we start? I guess we'll start up in the Northwest, up in Washington, because we have all that shimmying, shaking, and shifting with the tremors as the plate is vibrating from the Juan de Fuca. So the location that it's listed is just M0.5 Washington. Have you guys ever seen them do this? 
You ever seen them just listed as a state without triangulating from any location? That's so weird they're doing that. I wonder why. Let's go put the coordinates in and see what's actually there. Why are they trying to kind of like hide the location? Anybody know? Oh, it's not just anywhere in Washington. We're right below the top of the crater of Mount Rainier. The most famous stratovolcano on the planet, or at least in the United States, aside from Mount St. Helens, of course. And, well, <laughs> I mean, what can you say? Washington. Okay. So, what about the 2.4 down here at the border? Kalama, Washington. Is this a... Yeah, that's not an explosion or anything. 1.3 kilometer depth. That That is, again, down below the volcano at Mount Rainier. But what's at Kalama, Washington? That's where the shifting is kind of terminating. Hold on. Look, we go right down to it. Here's Washington. Here's Oregon. And it's right down in here somewhere where it, the earthquake is. Well, let's go put the coordinates in. Go see what's there. Ah, okay. All right. We're right next to Mount St. Helens. Just over to the west of Mount St. Helens. And Kalama, Kalama is next to Longview. This is where the, the tremors are taking place, guys. There's no doubt about it. Now, yes, it is next to Mount St. Helens. I always look within 40 miles for a volcano. Let's just see how far this is. 30, 25 to the crater. Hold on. To the inside of the rising dome of the crater, 24 miles. Okay, I always look within 40 miles because magma chambers can extend out that far and shift over time. That could be related to Mount St. Helens. This one definitely is related to Mount Rainier. And these up to the north are definitely related with the plate shifting in the Strait of Juan de Fuca. There's no disputing that. Wait, let's go make sure they're not explosions, right? <laughs> I got to make sure they're not explosions, even if they're out in the ocean. You get hot spots and explosions out in the ocean here. What about the 1.3 at the Olympic Peninsula? Oh, well, I'm glad I said something. You got a 1.4 explosion. Kalalum Bay. Oh, boy. This is back up on the Olympic Peninsula. Like you guys are going to be doing any blasting out there right now. Please. An explosion out on the Olympic Peninsula as the plate is shifting. Let's go see this road where you're going to be doing your blasting. Oh, there's no road. It's out. I mean, maybe a little bit over here. That's like a, a forestry road or something. Okay, we are, again, we are in the middle of nowhere out here. And uh, to have it listed as an explosion, uh, yeah, it's a little suspicious, wouldn't you say? I say, old boy. I say, old boy. It's a little expen a little uh, suspicious. I almost said expensive. A little suspicious. <laughs> expensive, yes. That's going to be expensive to get out there and do some blasting out there in the back hill woods you guys know what it costs to get blasting done anywhere you're not just going to go out there and do it for no reason oh i get it no wait it's bubba out there with his tannerite and he's doing target practice and bubba uh just didn't know he wasn't supposed to be doing that in the pine forest when they had a big fire threat in the past few weeks let's go down to the south shall we let's go look up this 1.3 because the tremors transferred down into Oregon. One more time, let's look at the red dots on the tremor map and see where they went down into Oregon. Do you see this? Around Salem, south of Salem, south of Eugene. On both sides of Eugene is another way to look at that. So let's go check it out. What's up with this 1.3? Uh-oh. Blodgett, Oregon has an explosion. What's up with all these explosions all of a sudden? Uh-oh. Right at the surface, too. Let's go put the coordinates in. Maybe Bubba went on a road trip. It's Bubba's brother. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's Bubba's brother. All right. So, here we are. We're at Corvallis, Oregon. Or it's the damn hippies up there. That's what it is. It's not Bubba's brother. It, that's what it is. It's a rainbow gathering encampment or something. 
an old deadhead group, commune out there at Blodgett. That's what it is. Look, I mean, we're zooming in on the area. Let's go down and see. Okay, we're on the side of a road, and we're next to a truck stop of some kind. Maybe we can get in here and see on a street level what's going on. Do we have a street level? No street level out here in Oregon. What a shame. It's the West Coast. Do you think Google Car would have driven the whole thing? Okay. Well, we don't have any street levels there. I will say an explosion out there. Wait. Where did I say we were on both sides of? With the tremors? Hold on. I think I said it, but I want to make sure. Yep. North of Eugene and south of Eugene. So let's get back over and look at their earthquake again. Here's the earthquake. Here's Eugene, north of Eugene, south of Eugene. That's where our tremors are. That's where the plate is shifting. That's where we get a mystery explosion out there. And we had it happen to the north. It can't be chance. It's in Washington and Oregon listed as explosions. They're not explosions. Or if they are, maybe they are. Mother Nature explosions. The plate is exploding. It's exploding. Or maybe it's just recorded as an explosion. Maybe it's a sudden shift of the plate. Maybe there's some gas. Some release of methane that explodes in a cave or coming up out of the ground. It would be interesting to go see if we have any hot spots showing up over in the coast. Wouldn't it? Let's go take a look, shall we? Come along with me on a voyage of discovery. And we will go look up the hot spots on the West Coast and see if there are any. There might not be. There weren't any on Google Earth. So I just have, the hot spots will show up as these dark black splotches on shortwave infrared. And we just need to go over here along the coast? Well, hey, hold on. We do. We've got fires and hot spots up in Washington right now. Let's go look at the regional view. So here is Washington's border. Here is Oregon. And I do need to just bring this back in time a little bit to see what's happened this morning. They cut the satellite. Oh, hey, hey, well, hey, we have a hot spot popping up in Oregon, just south of the border with Washington, right where the tremors come down to. Let's go back to the tremor map and compare where the explosions are also happening. <laughs> Look, coming down south of the border with Oregon, right down into here next to Portland. Pretty close match. This is Portland just down south. It's right next to it. Let's go forward in time now. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, there's another one along the coast popping up. Right over here to the west of the first one. They're just popping on just right there. You can see them. Hopefully you can see them. Let's go in and look at a very close-up view of northwest Oregon. And hopefully we'll be able to see these. Hopefully you'll be able to see them. Because I can see them here on my big screen. But yeah, look at that. They're flickering on and off. Multiple 100 degree temperatures there. Right next to where the explosions are being detected. Right next to where the plate is shifting. Cannot be a coincidence. It would be all be tied together. Let's go look at Washington. Whoa, hold on. We've got an outbreak of hotspots currently on the feed right now. Hold on, guys. This is all live. We have hotspots across Vancouver Island. Look at this. Hold on. Look at that. Starting this morning. Last night, look at last night. Wow, look across southeast Washington down here. This is last night going across Idaho. And then they cut the satellite feed because of their goofiness with the overheating of the satellite, whatever. But now here we are today and look, now across Vancouver Island. One, two, three, four. Wow, look at the spacing on these. We have to go up into Vancouver Island. Look at the spacing on these. One, two, three, four. This is just too freaky. Okay. We have hotspot releases going on right now live. You guys can follow along with me on College of DuPage, weather.cod.edu. And then you just go over and click on shortwave infrared and click on the last 200 images if you want to get everything since last night. But I'm just going to hit play. We're just going to watch this. This is Vancouver Island going down into the Olympic Peninsula. Look at the flickering on that. Look at that. 
going up across the Canada border now. Nobody can say farmers burning their fields when we're talking about dense pine forests. And a lot of rain and snow, at least in some of these areas. So look at this across the, the island right there. These are all popping off right now as I'm talking. So it's daytime happening during the daytime here along the coast and it's going down to look it's even happening down across the Olympic Peninsula down to the south where our explosions are being reported this is just wild let's go and take a look even further so here are our hot spots across Vancouver Island currently and going over to this little island here don't even know what it is let's go find out there's Vancouver it's going over to this thing all across here Half Moon Bay, all of this. But it's up here on the mountain ranges. I don't even know what these are called. Karen NW2, Karen Peak, Saren, C-A-R-E-N, Secret Cove. It's, it's this thing right here. Got a whole bunch going across there. And then trying to identify the areas in Vancouver is going to be a little bit hard. But we can see them here. Here, here, here. Of course, on that little island and going down to the south. This is the most current image. They're flickering on and off. Same within South Canada. So that let me that lets me know that it's not like some kind of fire because when it goes for five or ten minutes and then it's just gone, it's a release of heat of some kind. And the spacing on that right here man I, again i don't know if you're going to see this just because of the stream quality but on hd maybe you could see it right there so we have a well yeah that is that's a black splotch here 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 and here all the black splotches are hot spots and i think the hot spots are as the plate shifts and the plate is shifting because of greater events going on around the Pacific. So we get back to California, finally. <laughs> Sorry, this is taking so long. But we get back to California and the number of earthquakes has gone up. The frequency is increasing. Where is it increasing? It's increasing to the north at the volcanoes. It's increasing to the east at the Nevada border with several other volcanoes. So mainly to the north and to the east, we're dealing with volcanic locations. Once we get across California's coast, south of the Bay Area, we go on the San Andreas, of course, which is not volcanic. But we jump over the, most of the San Andreas. We go from the creeping section and skip over all the San Andreas down to the south, basically, right at Fraser Park, south of the valley. And we have a bunch of pumping operations here, and I mean tens of thousands of tens of thousands of them, like in Texas. So where should we begin? Do I need to show you all of these volcanoes? Let me just pull a few of them. For instance, this one, Cobb, California. Depending on which earthquake you click on, you either have Anderson, Cobb, or Geysers. Geyserville. And the USGS triangulates from the different towns, so you'll get a name that'll tell you what's there, Geysers, or a name that won't, Cobb. And when you zoom in on the spot, you're going to find these drill points and the pipeline, the drill points and pipeline taking steam to the turbines. They're getting the steam, of course, from the volcanic field here, Clear Lake Volcanic Field. That's where the stack of earthquakes is here. Over to the east, we have a 1.8 and up to the north, we have a 2, 2.3. The 1.8 is next to another volcano, but this one's in the valley. Let me show it to you right here. The earthquake coming in right about here along the road and right next to it you'll see all these little pads in the fields the little pads in the fields have tanks pumps jacks pipelines and they're doing two things oil and gas or actually three things oil gas and geothermal from here apparently some hot oil and gas are coming out of there maybe with some steam accompanying that but this is the sutter buttes this is a volcano that they're doing this on the side of and that's where the other earthquake is. So the only other one is the two up here to the north, and that's on the San Andreas, coming off of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Look at it this way. Northern California now. 
we have one set of twos coming off of the Juan de Fuca on the northern arm of the San Andreas. And then volcano and volcano hit north of the Bay Area. That's where just where we're starting. Over here to the east in eastern California at the Nevada border, there's like a crescent shape of earthquakes here all in the zero and one range between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. This crescent shape. Now this crescent shape matches something that I've been talking about for years at this point that I think professionals have missed. Zoom in and show it to you. Right here, this giant oval shape that's in between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. Let me turn off all my borders and place marks. And Google Earth is Google Earths. So here, this I think is the remnant of an ancient caldera. Itself is lined with volcanoes. It gets hit with earthquakes around the outside edge, going right into the middle of it. It has two folded basins, very deep, on either side, Lake Tahoe to the south and Pyramid Lake to the north. And then, equally spaced on both sides of the oval shape, we have geothermal fields, ones called Steamboat Springs, which most people know about, at least on the west coast right here. And Steamboat Springs, geothermal, been drilled to get steam. They have a whole bunch of geothermal pumping operations on this as well. Another set of geothermal turbines. Now on the north side of here, same distance almost, we have an unexploited geothermal field. This is on an Indian reservation. These are the needles at Pyramid Lake with their fumarole field there. So geothermal on both sides, volcanoes around the outside edge, earthquakes go around the outside edge and into the middle of it. I think it's an ancient caldera. Down to the south, same thing's going on, but it's a bigger spread. There's a ring of earthquakes around this. Do you see it? So around this, at the California-Nevada border, there is a confirmed supervolcano. While I think this one is between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake, professionals know this one is from earth-penetrating tomography measurements where they bounce a wave down in the ground and it comes back and tells them how big the cavity is down below. This is a 1,000 cubic kilometers of melt down below Long Valley Caldera. It, too, is lined with earthquakes on a daily or semi-daily basis. It's also lined with volcanoes that go all the way around the outside edge. So that's two oval shapes along the California-Nevada border. One, I think, is older, this one, as yet unidentified by professionals. And this one, down to the south, has been identified, but the earthquakes match it. All the way around it, going over to Monte Cristo Hills, which is over to the east. That's this line of earthquakes here going into the red arrow. And look, the tip of the red arrow got hit. Do you think that's chance or coincidence? Energy's trying to flow out over to the edge of the craton. One more time. Take a look at it, guys. One more time. The craton is being displaced. The reason I make such a big deal about that, professionals said it was not possible to displace the craton. They said earthquakes were not following the craton edge. They said it was chance and coincidence when I sent them years worth of research. They said, oh, it must just be chance or coincidence. Well, here we are now. Look at the diagonal lines of quakes in the last 24 hours. Coming out of the north, going down California's coast, and coming out of the north and going down to the east-southeast. It's pretty obvious. They connect across the border region, down where they make a split, and that split goes over to the arrow. And that's which way the earthquakes are going. There's a volcano right here where the split is. A volcanic field right here. Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes. Experienced a 6.5 earthquake and a 12-mile-long surface fissure fracture formed. Going in the direction of the earthquakes that you see now. So a 12-mile-long split formed in the ground, and it's heading back towards the supervolcano, is it not? It's pointing in that direction, at least. So it's going across, and here's the supervolcano down to the southwest. And there's a connection between them all. So the number of earthquakes, undisputable, is going up. And I told you a few days ago, what was it, three or four days ago, that we would see this, that we would see where you see one or two earthquakes, we're going to see stacks, and it's going to go up, and the number of earthquakes is going to flare up. The frequency will increase first, and then we'll see our earthquakes pop off across the plate. Well, so far the frequency has started to go up on the last day, the day after our warning expired. Like I said several times now, the slow slip is interfering with the normal flow across the plate down into California, and across the rest of the Craton. It's regulating right now. 
and it's holding it back. I'm, it's like a spring that's been pulled back and waiting to let go and hit down. Well, that's what's going to happen down into California. The number of earthquakes, again, the, the waves have already started coming in. The number of earthquakes has already started to increase. Next stop, magnitude should start to go up. Zeros, ones should be replaced by twos, threes, fours, fives. In the next few days, it's not going to take that long either. It's starting right now. You can see it. So there's a spread coming out of the Bay Area, and it's dead ending right next to Monterey Bay. This is the famous San Andreas Fault. Let me show it to you this way. San Juan Batista, California. San Juan Batista. And there's the San Andreas. It's a thick red line. So why are we stopping there? Well, that's just where the energy is coming down across the coast. And you can see over to the east, it's kind of doing the same thing. It's reached down to the California-Nevada border. It's reached to the volcanoes. And it's trying to go down to Owens Valley. Owens Valley is the other warned area that did not get hit. Bay Area, Owens Valley. Two spots didn't get hit at all with anything. So the other spots, at least they got hit with something. But today, the warning has expired last night. Which means our push is imminent. Even though I don't have a warning going for it. I can't issue a second warning if one expires and it doesn't hit. I look back to the Juan de Fuca fracture zone for where the push came from. And one day ago, we have a huge deposit of energy put into the plate from the northwest. So I think we're just running a few days behind. But that just gets me into uncharted waters. Like I said, I don't have previous examples of a slow slip happening with a large earthquake also at the same time in the same vicinity. No previous examples on that, at least in the United States. So we'll wait and see on that. I want you to watch with me. So while we're canceling the warnings for California technically because they expired last night, a big earthquake just struck the day before, which is kind of throwing a wrench into things, along with the slow slip, which I've said for the last eight years. I don't slow slip forecast. We watch the slow slip, the little red dots on the map from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network every day, and we look to see are they going to increase or decrease. And if they increase and they keep going, it means the plate's still shifting. Eventually, there will be compensation on the sides that are not shifting. California and up to the north in Vancouver Island. Now a bunch of hot spots appear across Vancouver. It can't be chance. The plate's shifting. It's releasing heat. So it's imminent then. If the plate is shifting, it's releasing heat. It's not going to take much longer before there's some kind of seismic accompaniment to that. In my estimation. But again, I don't have previous examples to go on. I would just think... When heat is being released, that's a sign that the plate's shifting. And if the plate's shifting, we're looking at seismic, not heat. Once the heat reaches a point where it either can't be taken anymore by the plate, or we get to a break point in the plate. New earthquake has just struck here at Monte Cristo Hills. It's in the two-ish range. Going down to the south across the entire southern arm of the Owens Valley at Ridgecrest, the number of earthquakes has also increased. So you see it spread out across a bigger area going up past Kozo and down south to the Lava Mountains still. Once we get in Southern California, the number of earthquakes is actually low. So the flow has not reached down low in California. It is definitely waiting to get down there. So we know where it is. You can see where it's coming in too. It's reached right down to about here, Central California, where we have our newest earthquake. It's going to be coming down into Ridgecrest and down into Southern California. We're going to see the number of earthquakes definitely increase in Southern California, just like the rest of the plate going up to the north. No earthquakes, no real earthquakes, reported out of Oregon. An explosion, you see. Ah, yes, I say, old boy. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. An explosion, you see. Yeah, Dutch, yeah, that's the ticket. I don't know. It's right next to all those hot spots. So looking back and recapping, while we flopped the forecast for several different fours to strike across California, upper fours, we got threes in several of the locations where we issued the warnings, right down to a few dozen miles, maybe a hundred miles at the most off, which I'm very happy about getting the locations right. But on the magnitude thing, with the slow slip playing in, I continue to watch even after the warning expires. So it's kind of like looking for a storm 
and the time comes and goes for when you're expecting the storm, but you can still see there's potential. You feel the humidity in the air. You're waiting for the meteorologist to come back on and update their forecast to extend it a little bit further. Well, that I kind of feel like that's where we are with the seismic that's going on. Now, I'll do something that no weather forecaster will do. I'll come back and correct myself if it doesn't hit. Look into it publicly, whip myself on the back if I really am doing something wrong. But I think you can all follow along with me. I certainly presented to you why I was issuing the warnings for the way I was, because the plate is shifting. It's not done shifting yet, so does that mean that we just wait? Yes. In the past, when the plate finishes shifting, if I can even say that, finishes shifting, that when it's done shifting, then the release, the big release happens. The 7.7 .7 earthquake in 2012. Vancouver Island shifted with thousands of little red dots on the tremor map, and then it ceased, it stopped. A few days after it stopped, a 7.7 .7 earthquake struck on the north side of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Well, today, or in the last 24 hours, 7.5 earthquake, or now up to 7.6 upgraded, but 7.5 to 7.6 struck here north of the area. More energy coming in, I think, which should increase things overall over the next several days. What more proof do we need, though, that when the whole U.S. gets shifted on a three-ish basis, it's been a while since we've seen any mid-range three or greater activity in Oklahoma, for instance, when the plate starts to move, that's really when I pay attention to the West Coast. Something's pushing the rest of the plate, right? Something's pushing Texas. Something's pushing Oklahoma. Something's pushing the New Madrid seismic zone. Speaking of the New Madrid seismic zone, I said I'd be deciding whether or not I'm going to go down to the New Madrid seismic zone to go investigate if they keep having hot spots down there. It's about a two and a half hour drive for me out of St. Louis. I didn't go look, so let's go just quickly take a look in the southern boot heel of Missouri. Well, hold on. We've got something going on down there, at least in central Arkansas. Yeah, we've got something. It's now shifted down to central Arkansas in a little cluster down around central Arkansas. We also have a cluster of hot spots at the power lines. The arcing power lines also showing up. But nothing across Tennessee or Kentucky or Missouri or Kansas or Oklahoma. So no hot spots except for these little black dots flickering off down here in Arkansas, pretty much. All in a big cluster. And again, if you can't see it, you can just follow along with me on the weather.cod.edu website. We're going to go back up to Canada really quick and just take a look and see if there's anything else showing up here east of Haida Gwaii since yesterday's hotspots. Oh, you can still see them. Hold on. You can still see the hotspots from yesterday. Watch this. So what you have to look for here, first of all, if you're on a phone, good luck. But here just east of Haida Gwaii, let me see if I can get a better zoom in on the area. So here's Haida Gwaii. We're looking right across in here. And what you're going to look for are the little black dots. This is from yesterday now. So let's go zoom it back. There. Okay. So throughout the day, it's really cloudy. Maybe even raining and snowing. But all these little black dots flaring off. There they are. Just dozens and dozens of them. Now, what's east of Haida Gwaii out here? We can go back over to Google Earth and show you. Now, we need to add in Vancouver Island to the mix, so it's not like it's just there. Okay, here's Haida Gwaii, and we're over here to the east. We're right out in here, east of the volcanic field, or in the Hogum Range. The Hogum Range contains a group of at least seven volcanic necks, which are associated with dikes, lava flow remnants, and pyroclastic cones. So it's a large volcanic group at least, one. And it's all around it. And we have them down to the south too. This is right in the middle of all of them. That's where all the hotspots are coming from. 
and it's very rural here. To top it all off, it's very rural. I mean, you do have some towns. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you do have some towns, but it's just extremely rural up there in mountainous Vancouver, BC. So hotspot. That's troubling, isn't it? Tro troubling, at least, for the plate shifting. When this kind of stuff's going on in the south perimeter of the Pacific, and this kind of stuff is going on on the north perimeter of the Pacific, well, over to the east, it's going out over into Asia. Where do you think it's going to go in the United States? It's going, or did I say over to the east? Over to the west, it's going out into Asia. Over to the east, it's going over into the United States, and it's spreading across the Great Down Edge in the U.S. It's also going across the Great Down Edges and plate boundaries down in South America, trying to go around South America as well. So it's all extremely interesting that this is taking place. To top it all off, Hawaii, for my Hawaiian viewers, is also swarming at the center of the plate, right back to the Middle East Rift Zone, going down to Lo'ihi, out in the ocean, where the predominance is taking place now, out in the ocean, next to Lo'ihi. I think we're having something on the side of the Middle East Rift Zone before we have something at the top. However, at the top, you did have Kilauea this past week start to show activity. Hey, my European viewers, check it out. North Italy just got hit. Right next to Milan. In between Milan and Venice. Ah, tanto amore. To my Italian viewers. Let me get a sip of my coffee. This is American coffee, guys. You wouldn't like it. You'd think it was like milk or something. Ah, uh, my Italian viewers. Much love to them. By the way, one of my biggest earthquake forecast hits ever was in Italy. Let me just tell you a quick story. If you're a new viewer, this is just amazing. I got thanked publicly on the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> now get this. A deep earthquake happened down below here out in the ocean of the Tyrrhenian Sea, as this is called. And it's south of Italy. A deep 5.8 earthquake. Really rare. We don't normally see many deep earthquakes there at all, let alone a deep 5.8. So I issued a warning when a deep earthquake happens anywhere. I look next to the deep earthquake for a shallower, larger earthquake. And again, it was a deep 5.8. So I issued a warning for a one magnitude larger earthquake. Well, that would take it up to like 6.8 to 7.0, which would be the largest earthquake in Italy in 40 years. But I made the video. I mean, it is what it is. It's a deep earthquake. So I issued the warning. Look for a shallower, larger earthquake within the next several days here in Italy, and I pointed right down here into the center of Italy on the plate boundary, which on the USGS plate boundary map, I can even show it to you there. Here, central Italy. And the deep earthquake came up in the Tyrrhenian Sea. So I issued the warning, put it out publicly, and the people in Italy got it. English people, English speaking people in Italy got it and took it to the local towns at the center of the area town called Norcia and issued the warnings around there to the mayor in one of the towns, at least one of the mayors. Gave them my video the day before. The next day, the day after I issued the warning, the largest earthquake in 40 years hit in central Italy, 6.8. I think they took it down to 6.4 or 6.5, whatever. They downgraded it, but came in at 6.8 to 7.0 range. I think it actually came in at 6.9 to 7. And then they downgraded it, downgraded it. But then, after it hit, people took to the news to thank me for issuing the warning. They said, you got to check out, this is on BBC now. Dutch Sense issued the warning day before. We issued the warning. We talked to the mayor, blah, blah, blah. That's all in the news. And it's been recorded, and you can go watch it over on YouTube if you really want to go look it up. Search Dutch Sense BBC. Skip over the stuff from my trolls, by the way, who have now capitalized on that and try to use it to get views on their anti-Dutch Sense propaganda. Paid pets by the system. Hey, did you guys know? Apparently there's a job there's a job market. The troll market. Get paid a lot. All you gotta do is sell your soul. And on that note, it is 2.22 p.m. Central Time. It is the 21st of October, 2020. Do you have an earthquake plan? Do you know what to do when an earthquake strikes? Hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No way. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hold on. 
A 4.0 earthquake struck right in the middle of our warned area that I was talking about next to Taiwan and Okinawa. You remember I mentioned Okinawa to the north? Okay, when did this hit? 1838 UTC within the last 40 minutes my god okay right after I got done talking about it a 4.0 earthquake just struck right next to Okinawa and the USGS is ignoring the earthquake they are not reporting the earthquake USGS not reporting the four and they do report 4.0 and greater internationally now so they can't use the 4.5 especially when it's coming from the Japanese it's an hour old now almost too wow let's go see where it is hold on yep there is Okinawa there is the earthquake right next to it on the plate boundary right in the middle of the open silent zone between our previous sets of earthquakes so here I mean this is a perfect example of a middle area getting hit by the end of my update that I was talking about at the start of my update that's just a four it's within the magnitude of what we're looking for it's just a four it's nothing major you know nothing crazy like I said we get about the same sized earthquakes on one side that we do on the other it's within the magnitude so we get a four and a five on one side and we get a four and a, most likely a five is going to happen on the other but I would already say this is already happening it's already taking place it's within the magnitude there it is and it's not chance or coincidence it's the middle fulcrum point between our previous sets of earthquakes as this whole thing is trying to equalize out this whole plate boundary region which again I'll show it to you right here this whole thing is trying to equalize out whatever push came into it or from down below it hence the earthquakes on both sides about the same size trying to spread out across an area man love it when I can do a real world real life example real time for everyone to see I'll be back like I said you need to have an earthquake plan I'm not going to go too hard into it you need to have an emergency kit get you through a couple days worth of any kind of disaster including an earthquake change of clothes set of shoes extra set of keys debit card first aid sanitation you know the drill put it together into a bag and have the bag ready to go so you can grab it whether it's for an earthquake or severe weather or a flood or a fire evacuation you'll have the basic needs in that bag so you don't have to fumble around and try and find a set of keys or your purse or your wallet with your ID in it or whatever you could have extra copies of that and put it into a bag and you'll be way better to go listen to how harpy and <laughs> annoying I sound hey I'm just trying to remind you uh, okay I'm gonna stop I'll stop guys much love I'm gonna save this as a video and we'll get this back out we'll put it over on YouTube and we will premiere it back I'm waiting in California now so while the warnings have expired we got a 7.0 deposited in the system the number of earthquakes is going up across California right now looks like I'm just a couple days behind in my warning but the warning expired so I don't want you to go contact your friends or family or loved ones. I just want you to watch along with me. If you already know about it, watch along with me. We'll wait another day or two to see if it flops completely. And if it flops completely, I'll be back on to talk about that too. We'll figure out where the energy went and why it's taking longer. But come on, the slow slip is what's taking place here. This has happened so many times where I'm looking for a regular progression to occur. A slow slip kicks up on the plate and we're sitting there watching it for two, three weeks as this thing shimmies and shakes and shifts and drops off small earthquakes and then break. Big earthquake hits. That's what the slow slips now. It doesn't happen everywhere on the planet that way. Just on the spots where we get stuck and the plate starts to transfer into another plate. Energy into another plate. Transfer of energy from the Pacific to the North American plate through the Juan de Fuca all those vibrations and shimmies as that happens then there's compensation along the way and it can be big like what happened up in Alaska just a few days ago a day ago it can be that big in the continental United States when these shifts happen just keep that in mind I don't have previous examples to go on when we have two of the sit going on at the same time where the plate is shifting with all the little red dots and a big earthquake hits at the same time onto the plate don't have previous examples so we're waiting and watching along with you guys and I've got family on the West Coast too so they're all watching with me I'll be back on at a moment's notice to do an update if anything changes at all peace out guys much love